Hello everyone, I'm Jeff Stanley with Stanley Handcrafted and today I wanted to talk about adhering your wicks to the bottom of jars and how important it really is. Uh, now this is one of those things that you can find a ton of different answers on. Uh, I'm just going to go through the four different types of uh, basically stickers or ways to stick uh, wicks to the bottom of the jar and ones that I like, ones that I don't like, and definitely ones to stay away from. And before I jump into that one, I just wanted to say that I just launched uh, yesterday two eBooks. Uh, there are basically, for I have a lot of people that watch the videos that wanted some of this stuff in a written form. So I went through and created two 17 page, uh, basically PDF uh, eBook documents. Uh, there's two different ones. One of them is how to make soy candles with GB464. And the other one is how to make soy candles with IGI 6006. Now I have both of these listed in the video description down below and I've got them posted on my website right now. So for anybody that wanted like a, a written document, pictures and everything, step-by-step, -step, uh, tips, tricks, kind of troubleshooting, uh, test sheets at the end of it, those are linked down below and they're on my website. So basically jumping into this, what we're gonna be talking about are ways to adhere the wicks to the bottom of the jars. Now this is something you definitely wanna pay attention to and it's something that you'll find over time which ones you like, which ones you don't like. And it's one you have to pay attention to because if your wick is not stuck to the bottom of the jar, you run the risk of that wick sliding to the side of the glass and creating a real fire hazard outside of the normal fire that <laughs> comes with lighting a candle. Uh, and the reason this is so important is because once that wick slides, if uh, there's a lot of videos, and I'll just go right into the first way that I saw these done. One of the first videos that I saw on YouTube when I started making candles, uh, the person was just dropping the wick from a pencil right down into the center of the candle. Uh, it wasn't adhered to the bottom, so they just literally dropped it straight down in there and then poured the wax. Uh, now for, I'd say probably about the first three quarters of the candle, that's not a problem. It's just gonna go through, it's gonna burn, you're gonna have a nice candle. But as that candle gets down towards the last 25% and the whole bottom section becomes basically a giant melt pool, that wick doesn't have anything to stick to. And most of these jars, you can't really see it right there, I guess with that reflection you kind of can, uh, they're concave, so inside the jar it curves like that. It's more of a convex shape, uh, kind of like a half dome shape on the inside of that. And what happens is when that gets to be fully melted, if you knock that a little bit, or even if it's just off center a little bit, that liquid, that wick is basically, it's either gonna fall over and it's gonna extinguish itself, it could slide all the way to the side of the glass and then just burn right up the side of that glass. And most glass will withstand some pretty good heat unless it's directly next to it, in which case you can melt the glass, the wick can get extremely hot, a glass can get extremely hot and crack or shatter, uh, which is of course gonna create a huge fire hazard. So first off, definitely adhere your wicks. Uh, don't ever drop a wick in there. Don't ever just drop a wick in there. It's extremely dangerous. You wanna make sure that they're stuck to the bottom. Uh, now, another one that I saw very early on was somebody was using melted wax. Now, again, I'm sure you can probably see why this isn't gonna work is because that melted wax, although it's sticking as you pour the wax, once it gets down to the bottom portion of the candle again, and it's melting the rest of the wax, of course it's gonna melt the wax that you stuck the wick with. So you're just running right into the same problem as dropping the wick in there. So definitely do not use melted wax. I've seen a lot of people kind of drip it onto the uh, wick tab and then stick it down in there. Very dangerous, do not do that. I uh, Probably the next method that a lot of people go is gonna be this one right here. And these are just basic wick stickers. You can get these from any candle supplier website, uh, Lone Star, Aztec, uh, Candle Science, anything like that. They're very cheap, they work really well uh, for the most part. But the one thing that you will run into with these is uh, once the candle gets down to the end, and even when you're making the candles, pulling the wicks, centering them and stuff like that, uh, the wick stickers have kind of a, a high rate or a, a high failure rate as when it comes to like popping from the glass. I would say, I don't know, in the hundred times I've used wick stickers and I do a lot of them in testing because I don't burn the candle the whole way. So I use wick stickers a lot just for basic testing. I would say probably one in 10 or one in 20 are gonna pop. Uh, that's not a real good rate. Uh, sometimes they pop more than that if you get a roll uh, I usually buy them in a roll of a thousand. And sometimes they just don't come as sticky as some of the other ones. So uh, you'll see a lot more. You might see two or three out of 10 pop. And of course, when you're selling candles, you want them to be perfect all the way through for the customer. And even if you're burning candles for yourself or just giving them to family, you don't wanna give a candle to somebody that's just gonna become a fire hazard for them. Now, probably the next method that a lot of people go, which is definitely better than wick stickers, and that's gonna be hot glue. 
And there are two different kinds. A lot of people just get your basic Michaels hot glue. Uh, those work extremely well. You probably have a little bit uh, better success rate than, or actually you will have a better success rate than the uh, Wick stickers. Whereas those are probably gonna be one or two out of 10. Uh, the hot glue, you're probably gonna have one out of 30, one out of 40. Uh, pop. I've had a lot of the hot glue ones pop, but it's not nearly as many. And you can definitely reduce that by going with a high temperature hot glue. And there are definitely a bunch of different places that you can get that stuff. You can get high temperature hot glue uh, from Amazon. Uh, Gorilla Glue makes one that's actually really nice. And those actually work really well too. That's definitely, if you were gonna go hot glue, I would say to get the hot glue that can withstand high heat. And that's just, it's gonna protect against your wick sliding from side to side. So even when the candle and the glass get extremely hot, it's not gonna make that glue pop. Now it does happen, so you definitely wanna be sure and just still do a lot of testing and everything like that. Uh, but the success rate on the high temperature hot glue is gonna be a lot higher than just your basic hot glue and of course the stickers. Now the last one that I was gonna bring up is the one that I use mostly and that's this right here. And if you've seen any one of my videos, you've seen me talk about this one. And this is called Red RTV. And you can get it in clear and I believe white. And basically what this is, is just a gasket adhesive. Uh, it's meant for high temperatures in automotive uh, applications. So it's a gasket adhesive. This stuff is really nice. It, it sets within an hour, 24 hours. It's hard as a rock. It sets like cement. And this stuff has never, in thousands of candles I've made, this stuff has never moved once. Uh, you can pull wicks as tight as possible, getting them into wick holders, uh, setting them. Uh, this stuff is not moving. It's not very expensive. I think the tube is probably five or $6 for a tube. Uh, and that will literally stick hundreds of wicks. So the cost on that is actually really cheap. Uh, this is definitely the best way to go. If you're going to make candles and you want them to sit, you don't wanna worry about wicks moving or anything like that, I strongly recommend Red RTV. And I'll have links to all these down below from uh, Candle Science to Amazon. Uh, everything will be in the video description down below. So then of course the next question comes up and it's if Red RTV works the best, why would you still recommend like a, t a high temperature hot glue or a wick sticker? And that basically comes down to other people who have been asking, what do you do if you wanna reuse a container? A lot of people sell containers to customers that they'll then turn around, kind of melt the rest of the wax, wax out, pull the wick out and then use that container for something else. Not necessarily a candle, uh, but if it's a nice vessel, somebody will turn around and use it for something else. Uh, and that's where you get into the different recommendations. So for me, I don't really sell my candles for people to reuse the jars. So I put the red RTV in there. And of course, if you were gonna try and take that stuff out, you'd need like some needle nose pliers. It's extremely difficult to get this stuff out of a jar. So if you were gonna reuse candles, reuse the vessels, red RTV is definitely not gonna be the best way to go. If you wanted to reuse the vessels, I would definitely recommend the high temperature hot glue. It's gonna be a lot easier to come out when that candle burns all the way down and somebody wants to reuse that container. Uh, again, it's basically going to be like some little needle nose pliers get in there. You grab the wick tab and it's going to pop out relatively easy. So that's pretty much it with this one. Just a very quick and easy demo. I see a lot of people talking about this one uh, in the comments down below from previous videos. And of course, in the DIY Facebook group, that one comes up quite a bit. And every time somebody comes through my markets or anything like that, or the website, they always see the red dot and they ask what it is also. And probably one of the other big questions that comes up is, is that toxic? And is it gonna be a problem once it burns down because it is an adhesive? Uh, it's, it's a stronger glue. And the answer is no. I mean, of course, if you were to heat the, the gasket adhesive, the red, uh, the red RTV, and even the hot glue, if you heat that stuff up to the point where it starts to melt, it's gonna release some stuff that's not really that great. It's not meant to be burned. Uh, but with the red RTV and the high temp uh, hot glue, uh, your candle's never gonna get hot enough to where that becomes an issue. So it's not gonna damage the candle. It's not gonna have any toxins kind of release and escape into the candle. So it's definitely not something that uh, you really need to be concerned about. But again, that comes down to testing. If you're, if you're not really concerned or if you're, if you're kind of on the fence with the red RTV, I would pour a candle that's maybe down towards the end and just let it burn for four, five, six hours and kind of see what that does. And you're gonna find the same thing with the high temperature hot glue, as well as the red RTV. No matter how hot you get that candle, it's still not gonna come close to the temperature that it's rated for, which I believe for the high temperature hot glue and the red RTV, 
is well over 400 degrees and your candle is really never going to come to even half of that. And to add on to that, if it is something that you're concerned with, I would definitely put that on the warning labels down below. I know for California, I believe it's Prop 65, you definitely have to label stuff like that. So if you're using a glue or a, an adhesive or anything like that, you definitely want to label and let people know that there is something in there like that. Uh, and again, it's just a good safety thing. A lot of people want to buy candles that are all natural. So if you're doing even a soy candle and you want to keep it natural, you would probably stay away from the high temperature hot glues and the red RTV and maybe just go more towards the stickers. But again, it all comes down to testing and safety and just kind of protecting yourself and the customer. And uh, it's definitely something you probably don't need to put, uh, aside from California, you probably don't need to put a lot of warning labels uh, for some of the stuff that you have in candles. But it's just one of those things that's easy to add it to the warning label that's on the bottom of candles and uh, something that's very easy just to throw in there and kind of forget. So like I said, that was kind of a quick and easy one, just real to the point. Uh, if you've got any questions about the Wix stickers, the glue, or the red RTV, please ask in the comments down below. I'll try to go through and answer every single one of them. Uh, again, we just launched the two eBooks, how to make candles with 464 and how to make candles with 6006. Uh, very good documents, jump over, jump over to the website. Uh, the links are in the video description down below. And if you do pick one up, let me know what you think about it and let me know if you have any questions with those. And of course, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and thank you for watching.